Welcome to Electron Online. One of the most confusing parts of using the Lagrangian is the generalized coordinate system. In the previous two examples when we did the Atwood machine, we had the positive x direction in a downward direction. Now let's reverse things. We're going to cause the, call the positive x direction upward. We're going to find the positions of m1 and m2 relative to the floor. And we're going to call potential energy equal to zero here at the floor as well. The distance from the floor to m1, we'll call that x1. The distance from the floor to the mass ton, we'll, mass 2, we'll call that x2. But we can still call x1 equal to x. So we can call that distance equal to x. And then if we take some arbitrary constant l, then x2 can be expressed as l minus x. Because in that respect, let's assume that this is l. We subtract this from it, we get x2 or, yeah, we get x2 right here. Notice as x gets smaller, x2 needs to get larger. We subtract a smaller and smaller number, and you can see that that does match. So we can still use the transformation that x1 equals x, and x2 equals some arbitrary constant minus x. g is still a positive 9.8 meters per second squared. And, and again, we're going to use the same example here. Notice that the pulley again has no mass, but we're going to reverse the general coordinate system and see that it still works exactly the same way. That's the beauty of the Lagrangian. We can use any coordinate system pointing in any direction and it will still work. Let's find the kinetic energy of our system. The kinetic energy is equal to 1 half m1 times its velocity squared. Now notice that its velocity will be a negative x dot, but since we square it, it simply still becomes x dot squared plus one half times m2 times its velocity squared, which is a positive x dot, x dot squared. The potential energy is equal to m1g times the height, in this case the height will be x, plus m2g times its height, x2, but x2 is l minus x. In other words, this can now be written as m1gx plus m2gl minus m2gx. So 2 right there. Now we're ready to write the Lagrangian. The Lagrangian is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy, which is equal to 1 half m1 x dot squared plus 1 half m2 x dot squared minus an m1 g x minus an m2 g l plus an m2 g x. Since we're subtracting the potential energy, all the signs will change right here. Remember, we're subtracting the potential energy. Now we're ready to find the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x. The partial of L with respect to x is equal to, notice there's no x here, there's no x there, there's no x here, only these two components survive. That gives us a minus m1g plus an m2g. And we can, we can factor out the g, this becomes an m2 minus an m1 times g putting the positive in front of the negative here. The partial of L with respect to x dot is equal to, notice that those, term, those three terms go to zero, and here these two terms become two times one half is one, m1 x dot plus m2 x dot. Now we can take the time derivative of that, the derivative with respect to time of the partial of L with respect to x dot, is equal to m1 x double dot plus m2 x double dot. We can factor out an x double dot. This becomes m1 plus m2 times x double dot. Now we can go ahead and write this equation. We take the first part, which is equal to this, m1 plus m2 times x double dot minus the partial of L with respect to x, which is this quantity right here, m2 minus m1 times g, and that must equal zero. 
Now we can go ahead and take this term, move to the other side, m1 plus m2 times x double dot is equal to the positive of that, which is m2 minus m1 times g. And then if we divide both sides by m1 plus m2, we can now write the equation as x double dot is equal to the numerator m2 minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2 times g. Now notice, if I rewrite this in terms of x double dot being the acceleration, acceleration is equal to m2 minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2 times g. So we can write it like this, that's a little bit easier to understand. So let's take a look at the sign of this value right here, the acceleration. Notice that m2 is a smaller mass than m1, giving us a negative numerator, which means acceleration itself is negative relative to our coordinate system. We assumed that x was positive in the upward direction and therefore must be negative in the downward direction. This acceleration being negative tells us then that we have an acceleration in the downward direction. But there are two masses. We have m1 and m2. Which mass are we talking about? Well, it turns out that we define the position of x relative to x1, which is the position of m1. Therefore, the direction of the acceleration is relative to m1. Since m1 is accelerating downward, the sign that we obtain is indeed correct and gives us a negative acceleration. Also, if we compare that to the previous video, notice the direction is opposite because there we had the positive x direction downward. Here we have the positive x, x direction upward. So it doesn't matter which way you set up your coordinate system. If you're careful about the signs, you will get the correct sign in the final answer. And that's how it's done.